I've been putting some stories on video and putting them on YouTube that um, I just enjoy telling these stories and so they're, they're funny but they're neat neat stories too so today I'm going to tell you about playing football at West Liberty so I got um, a little bit of work study money to go wrestle at West Liberty and so when I went down and I was looking at it because I didn't get to play football at Bethel Park Rudy didn't play me so I only had one offer and when that guy came down to talk to me Al Jax from Clarion Rudy told him I was sick what a jerk but anyway so I didn't get any football offers and so when I went down to West Liberty I see that uh, you know those guys aren't giants playing football so I asked a coach I go hey can I play football too or try to you know they go yeah you can walk on you know so I go, okay, I'm going to do that, you know. So I walk on as a freshman, and uh, I'm just a walk-on with no history walking into the, a team that had played in the NAIA uh, championship game two years in a row. So these guys were no slouches, and they had a, a really good defensive coach named Tom Grawl who was incredible. So I worked my way up. And I make the traveling squad, which is incredible because they had some kids that were transferring in. I know the kid that I beat out, Al Wagon, he was a transfer from the Citadel. And I flat-backed him one day, and I took his spot on the traveling squad. So I didn't realize it, but, you know, there's 60 guys on the traveling squad, and I was number 60. So I'd get taped up, and I'd wear all my pads all the time, and... Uh, and I'm looking around after about the third game, and I'm looking, you know, they, I go, man, they only play about 23 guys. You know, they never get done. They're not worried about putting guys in and getting experience or nothing. They're battling in these games. So, you know, I go, man, I'm going to quit getting taped up, and I'm not going to wear any pads. So that goes good, you know. So I'm just watching the games and stuff. So I think it's like game eight. It's pretty cold, and it was raining all week long, so there's giant puddles on the field. So there's a puddle right where the bench is on the 50-yard line. It could have been Parents' Day because my mom and dad were there. And uh, the puddle went down about the 35-yard line on each side, you know, so nobody's standing there, and it was a really good football game. So... I jumped on the back of the bench. I'm sitting on the back of the bench at the 50 watching this football game, just really enjoying myself, thinking, man, I got the best I got the best seat in the house. And uh, so all of a sudden, our monster linebacker, Joe Casper, he tackles somebody on the sidelines, and he goes sliding through the puddle. It was so deep that he disappeared underneath the water. And then when he came up, he's got his his knee pads are on his feet, his thigh pads are down around his knees. He's just dripping wet. And so um, Coach Grawl turns around and looks at him, and he sees him, and he goes, he knows that he can't play like that. So And then he turns to, and sees me, and he goes, Monk. And I'm thinking, he's going to put me in. I go, holy shit. I snap my helmet up. I jump through the puddle like Fred Flintstone. I one-toe it, and I'm out of the puddle. And I go, yeah, coach. He goes, give Joe your pants. I go, what? He goes, yeah, give Joe your pants. I go, coach, I'm wearing a jock strap. It's 33 degrees out, you know. He goes, monk. Give Joe your pants right now. We'll get you some pants. And I go, holy shit. So um, I got to take my pants off. I'm standing there in shoulder pads, a game jersey, high socks, cleats on, and a jock strap and nothing else. And my parents are like completely embarrassed. So it takes a while for the guy to get run up to the locker room and get me pants. So that was pretty incredible. It certainly made me famous around campus.